Hey guys, I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. Welcome back. Today I'm doing something I haven't done in quite a while, actually. I'm doing a build video. It's not going to be the longest or most complex or in-depth build video, but I'm just going to have some fun with it. Today I'm using my VSC Tactical Elite 2. I've had this thing for a little while. I really haven't done anything with it. It's been pretty much stock internally. I reviewed the gun. I checked out the internals. I haven't even shimmed it yet. I did a little bit of re-greasing on it, but it's got the auto-shimming gears in it, so I don't really need to shim it. But, you know, I put the, uh, the CAC suppressor on here, the Knight's Armament Company. Uh, this is the one I got from Airsoft Peak. Great suppressor. I'm going to be keeping this with the build today. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is making this an indoor legal gun. I'm going to make it shorter as well. Basically, what I'm going to do is make this an indoor legal gun. Right now, it's shooting about 380, 390. That's way too hot for indoors. I'm going to TAC this weekend in Tacoma, the Airsoft Center and their limit is 330 for semi and 300 for full auto. So I'm gonna to try to get this shooting like 295 to 300 so I can run full auto if I want to. So let's watch the little intro here and I'll get into more detail about my little build. All right, so as far as the materials go, I'm really not gonna do a whole lot to it. I'm going to install a shorter inner and outer barrel that'll A, decrease the FPS a little bit because the cylinder to barrel ratio will be off finally. And I will also do a little bit of internal tuning, probably uh, cut the spring down or put a softer one in one or the other. I recently did a build for someone, I'm actually still working on it here. Uh, it was a GNP M4, I put the Matrix SR47 body on it and I gave him another longer barrel, inner and outer barrel. So he let me have his old short uh, M4 and uh, inner and outer barrels from the GNP gun. So I've got a short inner barrel and a short outer barrel. I'm going to install those on the uh, VR16 today and hopefully it should get me a nicer, more clean look. And I'll also leave the suppressor on it. It should be pretty much flush with the rail system when it's done. So the first thing I'm actually going to do on my gun is remove the upper from the lower receiver. And that is a self-retaining pen so it'll just stay in there and we can slide our two receivers apart. Now with the two receivers apart, I've got the lower set aside, we'll go over that later. Now I've got my suppressor on here, I'll just go ahead and remove it. And I've got the flash hider on here, I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. Now the next step in our disassembly here, you're going to have to remove these two pins. And I've already gone ahead and done that, they'll go right here. These are not even widths on either end. You do have to punch out the rounded end first. And if you try to punch out the flat end first, you're just going to have a very tough time doing that. Lastly, you will have to loosen this little screw right here. Then your front sight assembly can slide off. Next, these two hex keys will have to be loosened. With those two loosened, we can go ahead and start unscrewing the rail system from the receiver. Now this step's a little tricky. You will have to use some pliers to loosen this. There are two edges here you can grip onto. But once loosened, you can just thread it off of the upper receiver. Now just remove your outer barrel. It's a little wedged in there. Go ahead and install our new one. Start threading this guy on. Make sure it's nice and tight. You'll probably want to use your pair of pliers to tighten it pretty well. Now when you're reinstalling the rail system, be extremely careful with the threading. I just spent about the past half hour trying to recorrect the threading on here because the machining on these E-Series is good, but it's not the most amazing. So be very careful when reinstalling this. Now go ahead and reinstall these little screws here. It's totally optional if you want to uh, put some Loctite on these. They're not really going anywhere. The rail system's already extremely tight, and if you get these tightened down pretty well, they're not going to come wiggling out. So I don't think Loctite is really necessary on these. Now with work finished on the barrel and upper receiver, we can actually go ahead and start on the gearbox here in a second. Now I've got the gearbox open. I'm actually only going to do a couple things with this. First, I'm going to install a sorbo pad, and that'll help me to correct the AOE. I'm obviously going to uh, remove one of the last teeth from the piston to help with the AOE so I don't chew my piston teeth up. And I'll also cut down the spring a little bit to get that kind of 295-300 FPS mark I'm looking for. And one thing I really was not quite happy with with this gun is how the trigger shuttle actually mesh with the trigger contacts. You can see here that there just isn't a lot of contact there and they barely touch actually. So I'm going to see if I can fit a different trigger shuttle in there that'll contact them better. Now I was able to find a different trigger shuttle. It's obviously not the same color. You can see it meshes a little bit sooner. It's about two millimeters longer than the old one. 
and it just the contacting is much much better so i'm hoping this will run a lot better when i'm actually on the field shooting okay i went ahead and cut out a sorbo pad it's sitting just in front of the piston head there so let's go ahead and check this we can see it's hitting on the uh the second tooth just a little bit there but the aoe looks all right so i'm going to go ahead and leave it there and glue the sorbo pad in and shave that tooth down just a little bit to correct for that now for those of you who don't know or just haven't looked around, you guys don't have to pay five bucks for a Sorbo pad. That's a ridiculously high price. Evike, GI, even Air Splat, they all sell them for, uh, you know, five bucks a piece. And that's way too much to pay for a Sorbo pad. You can actually buy a sheet of these really cheap. If you can find them wholesale, they're dirt cheap. And you can cut these out yourself. I just use an L96 cylinder for the, uh, the external cut and a barrel, just an AEG barrel for the internal cut. And I just press them against the servo pad and it cuts it pretty well. It takes a second, but it's doable. So you can get a sheet of those and you can make a couple hundred out of a good sheet pretty easily. So do that and then you can sell them for five bucks and make a, make a ton of money. <laughs> so go ahead and do that. That's what I've been doing for about the past six months and it saved me a ton of money instead of having to buy every single sorbothane pad off of a major retailer. Now that we have all our minor things done, I went ahead and, and trimmed the spring down a little bit. Yeah, I know, it kind of looks tacky, but honestly, it does drop the FPS quite a bit. And if you don't have bearings in there to get it stuck in, then it's not really a big deal. I have gotten cut springs stuck in bearings before, so I try to leave bearings out of the equation. I've also got the second to last tooth shaved down on that. I've got everything re-greased a little bit, and I've got the trigger contact shuttle replaced there. So we should be good to go. I'm going to go ahead and reassemble this, and then we can take a look at the hop assembly real quick. Now I did find that the rail on the left, right side of the chamber actually was about a millimeter too wide to fit in most of the uh, outer barrels that I had this going into. It fits great in the BFC because of the cut, but it's not going to fit very well in a lot of other barrels. So I went ahead and shaved this down to the metal file. Now I've got the C-clip off here. We can go ahead and remove the barrel. I've got the hop-up turned all the way off. Make sure you keep the hop-up turned upside down, that way your nub doesn't fall out. And we can go ahead and swap the bucking over. Make sure the ridge on the inside of the bucking lines up with that on the barrel. Go ahead and slide it into the hop-up chamber and replace our C-clip. Now this one has a couple extra ridges so it stays in place very, very nicely. And it clicks into place right there. Now we have the gun completely finished. Let's go ahead and take it over to the chrono and see how hot it's shooting. is my build, or at least a really inexpensive, practically free build on the VSC VR16 Tactical Elite 2. As you saw, we put a shorter outer and inner barrel in it. I got it shooting right where I wanted, right about that 300 FPS mark. So hopefully the really awful chrono attack doesn't think this is shooting over 300 for any reason. If it is, it's not a big deal. I'll just bring another gun that's shooting a lot softer that I can use in full auto. But I'm hoping to use this on full auto there because it'll be a lot more fun. Um, aside from that, it's shooting great. As you saw in the chrono test, uh, shot about 300 FPS, about 16 rounds a second. I was running a 7.4 volt LiPo. Shoots a lot faster on an 11.1. Obviously with that cut down spring, it's run a lot faster as far as rounds per second. This is actually quite a bit of fun to build, build it. Uh, it took me a few hours, to be honest. The rail system on here, the machining isn't great on the threading on here, and actually I had to re-thread some of it, so that took a lot of work. But I got that done, and it's all set to go. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this attack on Saturday, so I'll hopefully see you guys there. Thanks for watching. I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. If you haven't already, go check out my Facebook page. And I want to thank Brian again for sending me this gun. It's a really awesome gun. I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. Thanks, guys. Take it easy.